scientists have determined the likely source of the Black Death epidemic. The epidemic of this disease was one of the most tragic in the history of Europe. We are able to recreate its path as we move around our continent, but so far we were not sure what its proto-source was. The latest research reveals the veil of secrecy in this matter. The plague epidemic that took place in the 14th century took many lives. It is estimated that in the area of Eurasia between 1346 and 1353, in some places it was the cause of death of up to 60%. Inhabitants. It is known that the plague came from the east. One of the oldest known outbreaks of the disease was Kaffa, now known as Feodosia, on the Crimean Peninsula. An epidemic broke out there in 1346. At that time, the city was besieged by the Mongol army. Of course, there was a lot of thought about what was the original source of the plague epidemic. Some areas of Central Asia and the Caucasus were indicated as potential places from which it could come. However, evidence for this was lacking. And the point was, as the paleogeneticist Johannes Krauss of the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig put it, to find a place, where all strains meet, as in the case of the coronavirus for which we have variants Alpha, Delta, Omicron, all from a strain in Wuhan. Probably the research team led by Johannes Krauss managed to find this place. The original source of the epidemic may have been the areas that are now part of the territory of Kyrgyzstan. The local Yersinia pestis strain may have been responsible for the first deaths. It was from it that the strains that were responsible for the plague epidemic arose. Genetic research leads to this conclusion. An interesting additional evidence to support this thesis may be the fact that a fairly large variety of modern variants of Yersinia pestis can be found in China today. However, a specific argument for this concept is the fact that two cemeteries were found in Kyrgyzstan. Kara Jigik and Burana. Both had one thing in common. A significant number of tombstones from 1338 and 1339 were noticed on both of them. What's more, the inscriptions on ten of them mentioned the plague. But these were circumstantial, and scientists needed hard evidence. The remains from these cemeteries were excavated quite a long time ago, in the 1880s and 1890s. They were transferred to St. Petersburg. A team of scientists led by Maria Spiru from the University of Tübingen, Germany, sequenced the DNA of seven remains from Kierger cemeteries. This turned out to be a hit, in the case of three of them. Traces of Yersinia pestis were discovered. Even more importantly, a comparison of the samples with those taken from a person who died during the epidemic in London also showed that the Kyrgyz strain may have been the ancestor of the plague that killed so many people. In Europe, another factor that may have contributed to the spread of Yersinia pestis is trade. Let us remember that Europe and Asia were connected by the so-called the Silk Route. And the movement of people along its route favored the transfer of the disease to new areas. In this way, it could even reach the already mentioned China. On the other hand, there are opinions that the expansion of Yersinia pestis did not start in 1338 to 1339 in Kyrgyzstan, but even earlier with the Mongol army's offensive in the 13th century. Either way, it seems science is a few steps closer to finding an explanation. There may once have been oceans on Venus. Venus, our neighboring planet is currently a dry and parched wasteland where life as we know it could not survive. But according to a new study, Earth's twin may have had the conditions to support liquid water on its surface in the ancient past. What's more, analyzers have shown that there may even have been oceans there. Venus is relatively close to Earth, 
but the conditions there are radically different. The neighboring planet today is a hot and dry world, slightly smaller than Earth. With only trace amounts of water vapor in a thick atmosphere consisting mainly of Colorado too. However, in the distant past, Earth's twin may have been much friendlier. It may have had liquid water on its surface. In a new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, scientists suggest that even oceans may have been present. No one needs convincing that Venus is far from the blue planet. It is extremely dry, hot, and its thick atmosphere is mainly composed of carbon dioxide. The atmospheric pressure there is 92 times higher than the one we know from Earth. This makes the temperatures on Venus even higher than those we would encounter on Mercury, which is much closer to the Sun. Water on Venus exists in the form of water vapor, but in trace amounts. But the question is, has it always been like this? It is possible that we have never even encountered liquid water on Venus. However, the new models point to a completely different story. According to her, in the distant past, even at the beginning of the formation of our solar system, conditions on Venus could have been completely different. Solar radiation was then about 30% weaker, which may have contributed to lower temperatures on a neighboring planet. Going further, also the pressure on this planet could be much more bearable. Was there water there then? It is possible that this was indeed the case some 700 million years ago. Later, however, the galloping greenhouse effect led to its boiling away. In a way, this is a warning for us and our approach to our planet. The question of the potential presence of water on Venus and its amount decided to look closely at researchers from the University of Chicago. In creating a computer model of Venus's atmospheric history, they assumed that not only had the planet's climate in the past been much more tolerable, but it also had an ocean. They then fed into it different sets of data reflecting the different levels of water in the oceans, and then analyzed it for three different subsequent processes of water evaporation and oxygen loss on the planet that may have been taking place there. In total, this issue was analyzed in various configurations as many as 94,080 times. While a scoring system was introduced to select those results that would be closest to the current state of the atmosphere on Venus, it turned out that only a few hundred of the obtained results gave results similar to the conditions currently prevailing on the second planet from the Sun. To reflect the processes that took place there, the maximum depth of the oceans could not be greater than 300 meters. While the time in which Venus could theoretically be habitable would have to end as much as 3 billion years ago. It follows that this planet was uninhabitable for as much as 70% of its existence, which is as much as four times the previous estimates in this respect.